Oh, there we go. I don't have Devin yet. Share it all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered that. Well, you, what, you must. Uh, whenever he gets back, you can actually just you can actually just jump on the on the chat and let's just let us know. Okay, so um, okay, let's get going. Welcome everybody to the to the TNB podcast. Actually, at episode nine, actually getting got in a lot further than I thought we would. I'm joined by uh, I'm joined only by Sebastian this time around. Just yeah. uh, just the two. Not the uh, not the usual three or four, so uh, so uh, yeah, we're we're gonna have to do a lot more talking. You know, you can't just keep quiet and let them ramble in the background. That that's that's my usual strategy. Um, I just get everyone else to ramble. Um, so what 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 do we have to talk about? Where do you want to start? You want to start with the uh, want to start with T and B. Um, yeah, we can jump in and work our way to catch up on news that's going on, MSGP, WC series, and then yeah. Oh, let's do that. Good luck. Stick around for the week. Got a whole lot to get uh, to, to talk about and to get through. And start with the, with the league that this podcast is currently named after, um, TNB. We had round two on Friday night. Is that uh, more familiar territory than uh, than round one? Um, went to the desert in Bahrain. It didn't rain, but that wasn't really a surprise. Um, <laughs> what, uh, it was a it was an interesting race. It's actually unfortunate that we don't have the two that happen to be the commentators. Because like yeah. from a from a from driving in the race perspective, I, I actually can't tell you much about what happened everywhere else on the track. Um, I'm not sure. I was uh, I was just trying to get to the end myself. So uh, I've actually I actually got some uh, some decent points in that one. Got uh, got 20 points. That's almost as many points as I got last season. So I'm, uh, <laughs> 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 so I'm pretty impressed. But uh. Uh, Sebastian, uh, uh, it just happens to be that uh, the the Alpha team is running the podcast, so uh, yeah. so you can really start to own something if you want to. You had a uh, you had a uh, you had a retirement. Yeah, it was just a racing thing. I mean, for me crashing out. It was actually something to laugh about. <laughs> it doesn't matter you sing and you carry the of the cup. It was a, it was actually a lacquer of man. I was actually, um, I was actually in the, uh, I was actually in the party chat with both of you <laughs> when when the retirement <laughs> happened, and um, yeah, it was definitely. There, there, yeah, there, there wasn't much of a, a climax. So they sort of laughed it off and said, "Oh well, that was fun while it lasted." And uh, but uh, it must have been good racing if you could have just laughed it off the way you did. So um, the guys were really busy at the front. Obviously, Matt did not retire in that incident. He he went on to finish that race. He now leads he didn't the even have yeah. He now he now leads the championship. We've actually got the points up. On the screen, if you're watching, uh, good evening, Rob. First one to make a comment there. How's it going? Welcome to the Merc driver um, over at TNB. Also having a uh, having a good result on Friday night. He's actually yeah. he's actually third in the championship. Um, yeah. So if you look at that championship, the top three, Matter and Kimmy, not much in it, and they also happen to be the two guys that are on. Half a point, so it's sixty three point five and fifty eight point five, and then uh, Rob isn't far behind Kimmy on fifty one, and then there's actually a bit of a, a bit of a drop down to fourth place. Um, 
championship leader at the end of the last round. He uh, was also going well, but uh, his race ended in retirement, I, I believe. I must be honest. Yeah, it was, uh, I've, I've, between him and Matt, but nothing came of it because such good racing between all the guys, and it was it was great to see. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> you, know you can show it off, and it was it was because the album and during the racing week, you know, they, it was that sense of the reason why you're doing it in the first place, and that was good to see. Guys were having fun. Guys were going wheel to wheel. I think the familiar territory of Bahrain also helped you guys do that. I don't know how confident we, we all were in Vietnam. But uh, so that if you're looking at your screen, there is your championship standings. Obviously, Matt now leads the championship from Kimi. Uh, Rob not far behind, just, uh, just a couple of points behind in third place. If he's able to... Uh, if, if he's able to keep up a consistency of being in the top five in every race and you have guys that win and then maybe retire in the next round, if you're just that consistent driver, you, you well, know. That's, that's exactly what happened last season. I didn't finish myself in the top five. And, you know, to be leading the championship with three rounds remaining, that's what, that's what it gives you. You don't need to win every single race to be a champion. One of the uh, one of the famous world Formula One world champions, uh, quadruple world champion, Alain Prost. His nickname was the Professor, and uh, he got that nickname because he knew what he needed to win the championship, and that's all he would do. <clears throat> so. Um, if Prost needed to finish third in order to win that race, he, he would make sure he finished third, but he, he wouldn't chase second. He, he wasn't interested. He'd just make sure he had third and that car was going to finish in third and nothing was going to break on it. He was much more interested than finishing in third than, than actually chasing the leader. So, um, I mean, look at uh, Nico Rosberg's father. He, I, I believe the year he won the championship, he won one race. Yeah. So uh, that that was a season of consistency while everybody else uh, tripped up on themselves. Looking at the, uh, let's just go a little bit out of the top three. So if you're not in the top three, like myself or my teammate, actually, then uh, at least you can at least you can get some sort of mention. Um, Jean in fourth, actually done pretty well there on 36 points. He's Got the exact same amount of points as Quinton in fifth, both on thirty-six there. Boinky's thirty, so really close there in the in the midfield. Twenty-eight for Staffy, twenty-six for Nismax, twenty-two for Gav, uh, and then twenty for myself. And Force coming in with nineteen after his first round, so uh, he's gonna he's gonna be up there in no time. Then uh, over on the constructors, well, do you look at that? It was a joke. Remember, it was a joke. Yeah, and it's actually going to happen. <laughs> yeah, remember, it was a joke. Once upon a time, we made a joke that, you know, Matt uh, Matt might win this Constructors' Championship because he's the only driver without a teammate. And uh, Renault leads. Obviously, Force drives that uh, second Renault now. He has, Matt is no longer by himself. And... Uh, they lead the constructors championship from Mercedes Benz currently on fifty seven to eighty two, so that's quite a quite a difference. And then uh, Alfa Romeo. Well, that's that's not a very secure. We're in third place. Um, we're in third place, but I I wouldn't say it's a very secure third place. Uh, Alfa Romeo's in third place on forty eight points. McLaren's in fourth place on forty eight points. I'm pretty sure that comes down to alphabetical order. Um, Williams is in fifth on 47, so uh, there's one point between third and fifth, and then Alpha Tori 44, Racing Point 41, Red Bull 40.5, Ferrari 38. So the sham the constructors still very open, and I think a few key retirements on Friday actually just compressed the championship, uh, compressed the championship a little bit. I think it's pretty ironic that we have a Merck fan who's commenting Renault is overpowered. Well, that, 
that's a discussion for another day and yeah it, it involves another team one that you'll say of course they're not of course they're not overpowered they're they just 100 percent so uh what about the motor gp last weekend did you uh did you watch any of that? Did you watch the smaller formulas or just the big bikes? Um, no, yeah, I just watched the little bit of the smaller MTPs, the big bikes, and then um, I just saw the Toyota versions. Um, I think they're the only two that I saw that were actually good. Um, yeah. Just missed out there a bit on the bikes. Uh, well, I won't go into too much detail, I won't take too much time up, but obviously on the MotoGP, just, just a few mentions. Uh, over in Moto3, um, Darren Binder, again, not having the the best uh, qualifying session. And I'm not really sure what it comes down to. The, the commentators are actually discussing his inability to qualify well. And um, they were, the, the, the way they were talking, the, I, I think it comes down to some, it, something comes down to the bike, basically not, I don't know, over a one lap pace in a qualifying session, the guy just doesn't work. But I was interested because they were saying, but his race pace is amazing. And uh, on Sunday morning, they went out and did practice and he was fastest by uh, by quite some margin. And uh, he got his way up into a podium position, landed up finishing fourth um, from uh, 21st. 20, no, 25th. 25th on the grid. So... Uh, Good, good performance by him and almost a, a second career podium. I think he's got one other podium. I think he finished second. I think, I think what he focuses more on is that that initial race pace hmm. and not that high speed, down to fuel type of stuff. Um, you gotta remember, so, yeah, you've got to remember, like, like Moto3 is a very different kettle of fish. Like, yeah. you know, you can start in 20th and, and win a race. I mean, uh, Brad Binder won his first ever Moto Three race from last on the grid. Yeah. Um, so, so it really comes down to your race pace, how you manage your tire, um, how you manage the slipstream, and make sure you don't let the bike in front of you break that slipstream. And uh, you'll, 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 uh, Rob going on about illegal brake ducts and whatever. It's it's quite funny because if there's anything illegal about the brake ducts, they were copied from your car. No, that's that's not Merck Reynolds. Uh, yeah, no, I I I actually I actually looked into that and it's it's such a stupid ruling. It's such a stupid ruling. It's like, okay, so apparently the thing where you can't copy, that came in this year, on the first of January. So, if Racing Point already had access to those parts in December. There's nothing the FIA can do about it. Because they didn't copy mm. anything this year. <laughs> so yeah. it, it's yes. like a really stupid... But um, it, it's actually... We're, we're, we've just gone off the MotoGP now and onto the F1. We'll go back to MotoGP, but... Uh, there, there are very strong rumors, and I'm, I'm very excited about them. That uh, come 2021, we could essentially have four Red Bulls on the grid. So, um, yeah, Red Bull have Red Bull have basically stepped in and said, "We're not going to protest the so-called pink Mercedes." <clears throat> but if the FIA insists that that is legal. Then the Toro Rosso is gonna be, or the Alpha Tori is gonna be a Red Bull, basically. Okay, so um, I think we could get to 2021 with a situation where we've got Alpha Tories capable of causing upsets. So um, it could be interesting bringing another midfield team to the to the front of the grid and uh, just just causing upsets in qualifying and and stuff like that. We'll get back to F1 in just a second because when we start talking F1, it becomes this whirlpool and we forget, we forget about everything else. Um, 
it's true though so um we've got a that was the motor three and then obviously in the motor gp race um brad binder he had his uh best qualifying position ever uh, Miguel Oliveira, a few positions ahead of him, also getting his best qualifying position ever. He started in fifth. It was the best uh, start, I think, for, for KDM in quite some time. Uh, and uh, obviously unfortunate coming out there of turn one or turn two. I don't even remember when it was. It was right in the beginning of the race. Uh, Binder just clipping his future teammate. And uh, they uh, eventually both didn't finish that race. So what was potentially a very strong KTM day. Didn't didn't turn out that way. But uh Valentino Rossi, you know what? I've heard haters saying, yeah, he was holding up Maverick and to an extent I think he was holding up Maverick. I think Maverick I think Maverick in clean air, I think Quateraro would have possibly still won, but uh Maverick would have been there with him for a lot longer. Um but the fact is, he, he couldn't get past Rossi on the brakes. And I'm sorry for me, that's that's part of racing. You know, you're at the beginning of a championship year. Everybody's on the same slate. Um, you're all going for the championship. That's why you're there. This could very well be, or not very well, this is Rossi's final season on a on a factory bike. So, um, uh, you know what? If If he's going to win his 10th title, chances are it's going to come in a shortened weird messed up season um and uh look his ride he just proved that at the age of 40 you can keep up with the 20 year old riding in heat wave conditions when the tires are doing all sorts of things they shouldn't be doing because they're not used to this and um yeah look uh, i think that was if they had driver of the day in motor gp i think that was and not just because he's a favorite, just because, I mean, he he went and stood after the race, he went and stood on the tire wall and celebrated like he does. And th there was no crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so, he <coughs> so he was standing on the tire wall, waving his fist at an empty grandstand. And, um, <laughs> people thought he was crazy for doing it and they, and they asked him why why did he do that and he says no because uh it was funny um he he had a he had a he he did that celebration uh hey daniel how's it going daniel daniel online there um so rossi actually did that that celebration people were wondering why why did he do a celebration to an empty grandstand um that comes back to Valentino's Valentino Rossi's most famous celebration of all time. Okay, I'm not gonna say what year it was because I, I don't know. It, uh, he was in what the equivalent of Moto Two, no Moto Three. It's the equivalent of what Moto Three is today. It was the one two five CCs, and um, he won a race, and uh, he parked the bike basically at that corner basically got a marshal to hold it and uh the crowd got went wild you know they all thought he's gonna he's gonna come and celebrate in front of the grandstand and he didn't he he ran into the porta potty <laughs> <laughs> and uh apparently that and when he came out of there the roar that he got apparently it was like the, his most famous celebration so he went and he celebrated in front of an empty grandstand but uh but what a race i mean it's he uh, he he gave uh, Fabio Quattararo a big hug after the race, and commentators mentioned that that hug was separated by 22 years, and uh, that Fabio was young enough to be his son. So uh, quite 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 insane that he's still out there and and performing at a level that he can get podiums in in extreme conditions that that these riders aren't technically used to. See uh my uh my nephew there, Daniel, he's uh he's in the comments and he says there I see that uh there's a spot on your championship list. 
Number 22. It's got no name. It's got zero points. Is that waiting for me? Well, you just, <laughs> you just need to get the game and let me know. And uh, we'll make it happen. So long as we don't have a race like last week. I mean, last week uh, we had 19 drivers and the only driver we were missing was Chen. And uh, we know why we were missing Chen because Chen, when he signed up, said, sorry, guys, I'm not going to be at round one and round two. I'm only going to be there from round three because it's the end of the month. So um, he'll be with us. So if all the drivers come back that were there last week, Plus chain, we should have a full grid. But uh, as you know, if you've been in online lobbies for a while, it's not very often that you get a, there's always somebody having an issue or somebody not able to make it. And that's where the reserve drivers come in. So uh, if you want to drive, let us know. Get your name down there and uh, let's see. And uh, let's get you out of the uh, time trials and see what you can do. So um, back to. Uh, Back to GP, Quattararo obviously winning that race, Maverick finishing second, and uh, Rossi third. That's uh, not Maverick would be very happy with that result. That's a, that's a Yamaha one two three, nicely done. Except they were beaten. Except they were except they were beaten by their satellite team. It's like I was I was sitting there and. And and I was watching this, and I was like, "This is awesome!" You know, Quattararo out in front, dominating. Oh, this is awesome! But I was just thinking, imagine this in F1 terms. Imagine Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas doing everything they can to chase down Stroll, who's running away at the front in a replica of their car. So. <laughs> I think it would be brilliant. I mean, what if we get to one circuit this year where it just turns out, it just happens to work out that the 29 Merck chassis, actually, it's a little bit better for that track than the 2020 chassis. Then what? What if you have a Sergio Perez, Lauren, Lance Stroll? Well, that would be interesting if, if Lawrence was like, you know what, Lance, get out of the car. I've always wanted to do this. I oh, know that would be interesting. I don't think he has enough super license points. And he'd have to go on a diet because that cockpit is a bit. Yeah, he might. He might just suffocate in there. He'll lose like 10, 10 kilos worth of body weight. How much does an F one driver lose? Two, two, two point five kilos. Lose three kilograms of uh, of body weight, and then you jump out of the car, and you're like, "Yay!" Uh, no. And how Rossi does it in his 40s, I still don't know. So, um, MotoGP is going to take a little bit of a break. Obviously, they had a double weekend at Jerez. Um, round one and round two for the MotoGP. Round two and three for the Moto2 and three. Um, they're going to take a one-week break. And they'll be back the next weekend in the Czech Republic in Bruno. Um, and then that's followed immediately by a double weekend at the Red Bull Ring. So, uh, and Brad Binder, if you're a Brad Binder fan, I'll tell you that Brad Binder is very good around Czech Republic and he loves the Red Bull ring. He's won there in motor three and he's won there in motor two for a Red Bull KTM. So, um, let's, uh, let's see how that goes. That calendar is looking pretty good for the KTMs. I'm just saying, um, they just they just need to turn those qualifying results into into points. Um, so let's go on not on to something else. Obviously, just a just a quick mention. Um, World Superbikes will obviously be returning this weekend. Um, they will be going to the circuit the Jerez, where MotoGP have been for the past two weeks. So uh, that that should be interesting. And uh, if you've ever been interested in the Differences lap time wise between a superbike and a MotoGP. This is going to be your best opportunity. They were there last week, and uh, and they and they're not uh, they're not as far apart as you'd think. Really. No, that's we uh, we yeah. compared the lap records of Phillip Island, and uh, it's it's basically two seconds, and uh, it's it's really not what I was expecting. That's a prototype bike worth 
many, many, <laughs> many millions. And uh, is it that quick? So uh, it makes the superbike look even more impressive with what what they're able to to get out of it. Um, then obviously, I'm gonna let Munna take over for a little bit because he knows much more on the subject. But uh, Munna, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what happened in the GT series? Yeah, with, this, uh, this weekend we had the, the round of Imola, where GT4 and GT is gonna Imola for a three hour endurance. And thankfully, we had a second. It's a good thing. It's a good problem in the Right, Calvin, Calvin van der Linde taking, taking the victory at Imola. Very nicely done. Um, it was actually so impressive that he came from fifth to first in 20 minutes and ended up pulling a 20 second gap. An absolute, an absolute rant at the end, just, just catching up, making up time and then still pulling a gap. And uh, yeah. look, he's a, he's a, what didn't he win uh, 24, 24 hours of spa? And he's won. Uh, uh, no, he's. Uh, oh, but he won. Uh, oh, but he has won something. He won. He won the twenty. The yeah, North Schleifer. The North Schleifer. Yes. 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 That's why yes. it's his favorite track. If you ask Calvin van der Linde what is your favorite circuit in the world, he'll tell you it's North Schleifer because he's and and he's won it. So um. Yeah, he's, uh, some of our some of our South African boys abroad really uh, really doing a doing a great job. And uh, I believe Jordan Pepper didn't have the 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 race he would have wanted, but uh, also a race winner at Bathurst. The series yeah. two series to to keep our eyes on and uh, and something that's it's really dear to our hearts because it's something that comes to Galway, so we can relate to it. It's a championship that basically you follow that championship. Are we not the finale to that championship? Yes, we are. We're we're the finale. So um yes. So yeah, if you get a situation where points are Kyle Army is the decider. So um we're uh we just obviously don't know what the status of that race is going to be. But um, hopefully, if uh, if this year is cancelled for any reason, we do have that that ten year ten year deal with them, and uh, maybe we'll just miss them for a year and see them back in twenty twenty one. But uh, hopefully, they come this year in December, um, well, and we're allowed to go watch them. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, going on to F one. But say uh, while we were talking about uh, tracks and the, the the whole situation with the with the world right now, um, Portugal is actually aiming to have spectators at that race. Yeah. Yes. So Portugal is aiming to be the first race post uh, post all of this that. Uh, is actually going to have spectators. That is for now, obviously. Spain thought everything was fine about a month ago, and now the Spanish Grand Prix is coming into serious doubt. Um, that it's not just a rumor. That's that's pretty deep in there. We may have a third edition to the. I call it the 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 English leg of the Grand Prix calendar. Um, so yeah, Silverstone may become three weekends um, where Barcelona could very well fall away. Apparently, not only Spain, but specifically the town of Barcelona is currently having a rather nasty spike. So um, that, that Grand Prix is in question at the moment, but we won't lose a round. It'll be replaced by Silverstone. So we could get three I wouldn't mind it so much if they what what if they did Silverstone and I mean there's there's different layouts there, you know, like surely you can you know yeah. just and make make know. three tiny like it doesn't have to, I understand it's not gonna be three massive changes, three big different versions of the track, but just like three little iterations so that we're not getting exactly the same lap time. We 
you know, instead of taking the chicane that goes left, you take the chicane that goes right, or whatever the case is, and you just you mix it up a little bit. Um, it is a track with with alternate uh, with with alternate roads on it. So um, let's see what uh, what they come up with. But that that could become a uh, a three week Silverstone event um, if if Spain aren't able to to bring those numbers down in the in the near future but portugal aiming portugal right next door aiming to be the first country with spectators so um it's all very confusing and it doesn't make much sense so uh obviously there was no formula one race last week so we can't talk about the race we've got nothing to review all we can talk about is the race that's coming obviously we're going to silverstone for what will be the first of two, possibly three races. Um, Muna, what do you think of this circuit? You excited? Not really. Um, I don't know. It's it's it's. Not really. Because of some problems, you know, you know, he's gonna pull up something off the deck. You know, even even if still saying there's something different, you can pull off the deck and drop it on the race. You know, so. I think we're going to be in Seoul for now. I think we're going to be in Seoul for now. We pulled up such a lead that we put the pit tire and still finished three seconds later. Yeah, look, at, at the moment, Lewis Hamilton, he's, you know, he's, he's, mm -hmm. doing, he's doing a superior job to everybody else. I mean, whatever you say about Lewis Hamilton, you've always got to remember that there's a second car just like his somewhere on the track. Yeah. And, um, why isn't that guy um you know why isn't that guy on lewis's gearbox mm -hmm. asking all sorts of questions and putting him under all sorts of pressure and um so you know he's obviously just out qualifying and out driving his teammate on a constant basis and now a silver stone for me is not very exciting because i see it as a merc circuit um they 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 go well there and uh, they really don't need any circuits to to work in their advantage. They they've been winning on Red Bull circuits, so you know um, the Red Bull Ring and and Hungary were supposed to be. Oh, this is where Max will be strong. So um, so I, I hope not. Maybe maybe Racing Point. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe that 2019 chassis just works like a dream around Silverstone and the 2020 chassis doesn't like it so much. That that would be hilarious. No, um, be <laughs> if we get a racing point front row in England or in Britain, whatever you want to call it, and um, it's like, oh, okay, it's a fluke. You know, they've got good one lap pace. They, they, they got their laps together. But the race will start. And obviously, Hamilton and Valtteri will, will dispose of them. And, and, and off they go into the distance. And then that's not the case. Just imagine we're on lap seven. And it's like, guys, you know, the racing points. Yeah, they're gone. They're, they're down the road yeah. somewhere. They that, 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 that would be hilarious. I, I, I want to see it. Because if that is a 2019 chassis, I honestly believe, you know, you, you get tracks where a chassis just works perfectly. And sometimes you get a track where your, your, your car doesn't like that particular track. What are the odds that you get to a track where the 2019 chassis on that particular circuit just works better? They've got the same engine. They've got the same gearbox. And it's basically a 2019 Merc. So, yeah. If, you, if we find a race, if we find a racetrack somewhere on this calendar where the 2019 iteration of the car would have worked better, we could see Valtteri, maybe not Lewis, but we could see Valtteri desperately trying to chase down Pinkos. And I think that would be brilliant for him. In fact, they, they should be chasing down Haas. That would be even better. Imagine good for Spiner's uh, tweets after that. Or at least his, uh, his not-so-real account. Um, 
that 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 account is quite entertaining. You know, go go look for that. I think it's good through a rant or something like that. Something along the lines of that on Twitter. Go look for that. That is a that is a very entertaining account. And sometimes sometimes I don't think it's fake at all. Sometimes I think it's him, and he just calls it fake because now he knows he can say whatever the heck he wants. Um. Because that would be brilliant, actually, if that was just the real guy behind it. And he's like, I can say whatever the hell I want right now because everyone thinks it's someone else. So, uh, (laughs) I mean, it could be him, you know, and like, I think it would be brilliant if that ever came out like a couple of years after he leaves F1. It's like, remember that that account that was like making fun of Guthra and swearing all the people? It was actually Guthra. It's like, what? Oh, that would be brilliant. I love it. But um, what can we expect from Britain? I know what... Uh, and then I'm thinking of going to racing point. Racing point on the podium. Let's, yeah. um, let me just see here. For anyone who's watching, I, I think I've still got... Still got the points from last week because we haven't had a race. So I can just put those up. Here we go. Hamilton leading to Bottas. Uh, Hamilton leads Bottas. Followed by Verstappen. Fourth. Fourth is Norris. Yeah. Didn't score points in Hungary. Otherwise, uh, could have still potentially been third. And then uh, Albon, who everyone's giving uh, all sorts of hate. He's a... Uh, actually fifth in the championship and he's not far behind norris so i don't know um perez the clerk stroll signs vettel so um yeah not uh not good times there for the for the ferrari boys they uh i don't don't think they expected the pink cars and the orange cars and the blue cars all to be above them so um and like bluish cars. Or well, are they? The, I don't know. The other thing we want to remember is sometimes Ferrari are still the a joking car. And they're actually done very well at Houston. Good age. 2017, 2018. You know, they were really with the most at Houston. So, let's see. Just brought up that uh, same screen for you, but this time with the constructors. Just to give you a reminder. Before we go into the next round in Britain this weekend, Mercedes obviously leading the championship, but not only are they leading the championship with a championship lead like that. Now I'd be very comfortable right now. Mercedes 121 points. Red Bull are the second best team. Um, they're on 55. Yeah. Okay. So even if Red Bull could double their constructors' points, they'd be second. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the gap. 121. If Red Bull could double their 55 points to 110, they'd still be second. Um, third place, surprisingly for me, the biggest surprise of the season so far, McLaren. They're, uh, they're doing a fantastic job. They, they're still hanging on there. Uh, Norris didn't uh, pick up points in Hungary. And that's obviously now allowed Racing Point to uh, to get a heck of a lot closer. They had a they had a good result with uh, Mr. Stroll. I don't know if it just comes down to maybe that uh, maybe that McLaren really really worked around that uh, around that Austrian circuit. Um, maybe. When they got to Hungary, it just didn't translate as well. I'm not sure, but uh, I definitely didn't see that. Uh, we did see it out of the pink cars. Um, Stroll, obviously, you know, Stroll did exactly what he needed to do at exactly the right time. And he needs to continue doing this. Um, there's obviously a lot of talk about... Um, actually, I've, I've just been reminded of something. and I'll, I'll mention it now. But uh, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, of the Sebastian Vettel potential Aston Martin move. And that would mean that one of those racing point drivers would have to lose his drive 
One of the drivers is obviously the owner's son. So um, everybody's sort of looking the other way. And, and Perez yeah. looks to be the man who could potentially lose his drive. And, and people aren't happy about that because a lot of people rate Perez higher. So this is exactly what Stroll needs to do. He needs to out-qualify Perez. Perez qualifies fourth. That's great. Well, Stroll was in third. So, you know, and um, in the race itself, Stroll, uh, Stroll outperformed his teammate. So um, quite quite a lot, actually. So uh, he needs to carry on doing that. Um, what I wanted to bring up is there's a, there's a new rumor. Yeah. And it involves Sebastian Vettel. Now, I've, I've always been very anti whenever people uh, mention a Sebastian Vettel Red Bull return. Because I've always said, I've always said it's not going to happen. The man doesn't really go back on his drivers. And uh, yeah, I just don't see it as a potential. But now all of a sudden, something has opened up in the last couple of days. With Alf, with these current rules and Racing Point basically building a Merc. Okay. Obviously, the Red Bull management have come out and said, well, if that is the case, next year's Alpha Tori, it's going to basically be a Red Bull. Because, no, then we don't have to design two cars. We can design one. It's cheaper. You know? So, uh... With Alpha Tori potentially becoming a podium spec car, all of a sudden people are saying if Red Bull do take him back, he could return to the team he got his debut win in. And then that's his last season he went for him to know one. The season that he got his first win gets one win to the end. <laughs> I think I think he could go to Alpha Tori. Um you know what? I would actually think it's a it's a it's a great idea. If you basically you get the most successful Red Bull driver of all time, throw him at Alpha Tori in a car that is capable of being as quick as a Red Bull on any given weekend. Okay? So mm -hmm. he's not driving a, a a rubbish car at all. He's got a competitive car, you put him at Alpha Tori. And you say, right, instead of Alpha Tori having two relatively new drivers here, we'll bring drivers in through the Red Bull Academy and they'll drive with Sebastian Vettel. And when they go to Red Bull, Sebastian Vettel will say, if that guy is ready for it. Because clearly they're not getting it right. Um, they, 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 in... I actually think they're uh, they're they're messing up a few drivers' careers in 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 the way they so strongly promoting Max's career. And I am a Max fan, but um, I just think no teammate of Max Verstappen has ever got the support of Max Verstappen, the the, the same kind of support from his team. Um, they yeah. they they already so questioning Albon, team. and I'm like, you know, this guy almost won a race. A few races ago so has everyone just forgotten about that that little tap from hamilton didn't come he's on the freshest tire a few laps to go and it was yeah. very very possible albon could have won his first race and definitely got his first podium and uh, now they're just acting like that was never a thing so uh it's, uh, it's a little bit annoying but uh hopefully hopefully albon can step up and uh you know just just get closer to max in the quality get 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 closer to him in the race um mercs are dominating yes but there you have old max 20 seconds adrift of the mercs and you get albon a minute back you know it's it's you know what i mean you you need them both to be 20 seconds adrift of the mercs you know what i mean so so that you can use them in strategies and you got two of them to play with and and whatever the case is and at the moment they're they're playing with one driver, and I just don't think that the second driver is getting that sort of support. Whoever the second driver is usually gets out qualified by an Alfa Tori or a Toro Rosso. Think about yeah. it.
when when Gasly was there, he was getting out qualified by Albon, and everyone was like, Albon's amazing. And then, and now, and now Albon's in a Red Bull, and and Gasly puts Alpha Tori in Q3, and everyone's like, Gasly's amazing, and it's like, uh, guys, no, you can't just move these guys up and down between the two teams. They're never going to get anywhere, and you're just breaking their confidence. To you know what, build him a decent Alpha Tori and leave him there, and. Uh, let him build up his confidence for two or three seasons and then put him in a Red Bull. But don't put a rookie up against Max Verstappen and then judge him after round three. Um, I, know he's, I know he's not a rookie, but... It's... They've got a very similar. They've got a very similar situation in 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 MotoGP right now. They say the hardest bike to ride on the circuit is the Repsol yeah. Honda. They say it's an absolute beast, and Max, uh, Max, and Mark just understands it, um, and he knows how to ride it. And uh, anyone else who tries, they really have their hands full with that bike. So, um, like apparently, if you look at um, like uh, braking data. In MotoGP, Mark Marquez uses much more back brake than anyone on the grid. Sure. So, yeah. That's like, he obviously has his own way of controlling that Honda. And um, his, his brother's obviously, um, I'm sure he has already, but he's going to have to study that data and, and figure out how how he can obviously extract mm-hmm. extract that same amount. But um, but yeah, but the British Grand Prix this weekend, F1 is back. We had a had a break. Luckily, MotoGP was there to to cover the gap. But uh, big boys are back. I think it's uh, I think it's gonna be a Merc weekend. So I'm excited because it's F1. But I'm not really who's it gonna be. Uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm not as enthusiastic about my predictions. I'm like, oh, let's go through our predictions. I'm like, oh, I don't really want to go through predictions. It's, 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 I know what the prediction is going to be. It's going to be like Merc, Merc, and another guy. So, um, okay, so so, <laughs> what's what's your prediction? Okay, let, let's be fair. Do do you think uh, do you think Max can pull a surprise in Silverstone? Um, possibly yes. Depends on how they are yesterday. Um, okay, so, yeah. so so Red Bull possible. McLaren is quick, but let's face it, no. Um, <laughs> racing Point is quick, but yeah. I don't think it's, it's a race winner. Racing Point, if you look at how the Wild Merc is there last year, they could easily recreate that same result. Um, but they didn't. I think Racing Point could potentially have a better chance than Ferrari. In yeah. in in. If racing point can keep it clean, then it might be also very nice. Very nicely done, and then obviously I just I just just here under Ferrari you've got Renault. Um, Renault not having um, a fantastic season, but uh, yeah. in the in the last race, Dan, Danny Ricardo really uh outperforming his teammate, and I think maybe just that that gear off the grid, maybe just showing a little bit. On uh, on Ocon's side, um, you know, while he's been sitting on the sidelines, Ricardo's been at it. So uh, he's just showing there at the Renault team. Ocon, I think, is going to be. Will he be leading that team next season? Who's going to Renault? Did I did I just forget the Renault lineup? Yeah, I just forgot the Renault lineup. Ocon, who is partnering Ocon at Renault? Next year. I forgot the, the Renault lineup. Oh yes. The man the man my the man my PSN and Twitch feed and everything is named after. I'm totally a fan. I forgot that he was back. Oh yes, so Fernando Alonso obviously coming back to Renault. He uh, won his two titles at Renault. And um he has he has said, look, don't don't expect um don't even expect podiums out of me in in twenty twenty one. That's not a thing. I've spoken to Renault. We know that's not a thing. And um 
2022 is going to be a thing. But uh, having said that, maybe they have built a beast, but what have Merck built? Like, you know, Merck's being very quiet about all of this. And uh, I think, I think, I think they've, they've got it covered. I don't think Renault is going to suddenly in 2022 just uh, they figured out something nobody else has got and they're just going to dom- I don't think that's going to happen but that's the way they're talking so uh, we'll see what happens in 2022 it's going to be a major uh, Renault are just angry because they've got no one to copy um, they're they're the thing is, race, Racing Points as a private team can can have access to to Mercedes designs or whatever the case is and then make their car that close to a Mercedes legally and then Renault is a manufacturer with no one to copy. Yeah. So they have to do all the work themselves. They have to do all the designing, all the development, all the research, all of that themselves while Force India or Racing Point or Alpha Tauri or Alpha Romeo, Haas, whatever, they can buy packages from Mercedes, from Ferrari, whoever it is. And um, obviously, as a manufacturer that's trying to win the championship on a budget, Renault is always going to be the midfield team that's uh, complaining the most. Well, if you think about it, they can actually copy Renault. Renault can copy the McLaren, right? And actually can be Renault and France. Daniel, Daniel is still here in the... Uh, in the comment section, uh, Rob Rob's given a prediction for the race, but Rob's pretty biased. Um, so so Daniel, just uh, give give your prediction there. Um, if it's going to be a Merck win, which uh, which driver do you agree with, Rob? Rob going for a Bottas for the win. Um, love to see Bottas really take it to Lewis Hamilton for the next two weeks and. Uh, Give him a real headache, you know. Get on his gearbox and ask all sorts of questions of him, and mm. uh, push him when, when, when the tires aren't so great. He doesn't have a twenty-second gap. He can just back off, and um, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd like to see someone really push him, you know, back like back in the, back in the Rosberg times. But now, unfortunately, Rosberg is just a figure on the big screen, um, simply cheering Lewis on. Did you see that? That that was yeah. that was yeah. that was so funny, but so embarrassing, all at the same time. So, uh, yeah, I know that's <laughs> he was literally cheering on his rival from the side, and the uh, the whole pose didn't look very uh, yeah, like no, Nico, what what was that? So um, well, that's not good. So um. What else is coming up this weekend? We've got the Formula One, obviously in Britain. Like we mentioned, the World Superbikes will be making a return. So uh, MotoGP is on a break. So if you're, uh, uh, I know, you, I know you just saw it and you love it, but because um, <clears throat> how does that not? Surely it's the same guy. But um. Now everybody knows how not Sebastian got his name. The first part of that video is uh, not Sebastian, and the second part of that video is Sebastian, and it's the same board. So uh, you gotta love it. But uh, yeah, no, I, I decided to to make that into a video and just leave it running in the background for a while because good times, you know. But uh, that that was actually the uh, <laughs> that was actually round one. Season one of the 2019 iteration of this game, and uh, obviously not getting off to a great start for the then. What was your name, TNB Munna? Now not yeah, Sebastian, yeah, just, because yeah, of just, was just, uh, Munna 303. Yes, yeah. Twitch handle was uh, TNB TV. Munna, and yeah. that's still TNB Munna. You should change that. Uh, I, I type in not Seb and it's like eh, and I'm like, and I'm like, oh yes, but uh, I see, I see Kimmy's done it, but only half, because if you go on uh, Twitter, if you go on Twitter, it says not Kimmy, but his his handle is still uh, TNB was, so uh, just just change the display name and not the actual handle, but um, so that's uh, 
not Sebastian Vettel losing the championship in round one? Or, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's the start of all your migraines. <laughs> not really sure. Uh, so, yeah, World Superbikes, I'm actually, I'm actually going to try and watch it. Um, I'm actually going to try and watch it this weekend. I uh, I haven't what, followed uh, World Superbikes in quite some time, but uh, gonna gonna oh, gonna, 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 gonna gonna try and give it a follow. Let's let's see what happens. Um, if if uh, if I'm into race two and the Kawasaki's are right in front, I'll I'll just stop watching because that's what I did last time I watched Superbikes about four years ago. So um, yeah, let's let's see what happens there, and uh, obviously just. We we were uh, starved of motorsport for such a long time. I'm gonna I'm gonna tune into everything for a while. Yeah, what do you know? What time the race starts on Sunday? Race on Sunday? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Actually, the last two races that we've had, um, they've been on. Yeah, but but Hungary and Austria have been on our time. So uh, when when you look at the website and it says three o'clock track time, it was three o'clock for us as well. There was no time difference, but uh, I'm not sure if Britain has a. I'm pretty sure they have a one hour time difference as we. Um, they're they're not. They Britain is never on exactly the same time as South Africa. It's either one hour or two hours. So um. Yeah. Whatever whatever the uh, race is, yeah. track time will probably be three o'clock. South African time, um, they are generally all at all at the same time, like three hundred kilometers long. What do you make of the uh, talk of Silverstone possibly getting lights? I think it's uh, I think it's too m- too many. Yeah. Say if you want another night race, and I mean Britain. Well, not not right now with the COVID, but but if 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 you've got you know crowds wise, Britain, you're you're not going to struggle to to fill a second. What about a London night race? But uh, yeah, lights yeah. light lights around Silverstone, not really. I I read about that earlier this week, and I was like, I, I don't know how true this is, but I hope it doesn't happen. One one thing I can say, talking about lights, is uh. You aware that uh, Kuala Lumpur has had a full installation, a full lighting installation, like full on. It looks like Bahrain. It's an amazing lighting installation. So uh, yes. one of the problems yes. with F1 in Malaysia was the heat, and uh, that means they could potentially return as a night race. Um, could they? Because they're not against us, because that's why they are not going to be uh we're almost at the one hour mark we're just gonna go a little bit over the one hour mark not as much as last week but just for the last 10 minutes can we just uh can we touch on the big news f1's latest three additions to the calendar um what do you make of them uh one by one we'll start with uh obviously it's gonna i think it's gonna be the finale um yeah, it's going to be the finale, and uh, apparently it's going to be run differently to the other race weekends of of the calendar. It's basically going to be a hybrid of some things they're thinking about doing in F1 in the future. So, uh, basically, there's going to be just the one practice session. Then the rest of the weekend will be the same. The one practice session will come on the Saturday. So basically, practice one will be practice three. Um, so basically, the teams will have one practice session to get their cars ready for Imola, and then they're on to qualifying. So uh, they haven't been there since 2006. So it's and and the track's not what it looked like in 2006. Apparently, they have made a slight change there at at the very end of the track to to enable the safety cars to enter a pit lane more more safely um so uh that that's going to be very interesting um 
just giving <clears throat> giving giving the teams really less time to to perfect everything and uh throwing them into a race situation a lot faster um you know obviously once once you get into qualifying it's park for may and you're stuck with it so um that that, that could be interesting uh san marino you excited to see it back or uh i think i think the prestige but i think in terms of a exciting race do you, where do you pass on san marino like nobody's talking about uh imola nobody's talking about that where where do you pass in imola <laughs> turn, turn 1 turn 4 you encounter there's actually not a lot of places you can actually turn on the inside and make it sit it's going to be it's going to be an interesting return for uh for imola another track making a return nurburgring um not the north schleife the <laughs> the nurburgring gp circuit um last used in 2011 2012 i think some something like that um basically back when the german grand prix was being rotated between the two venues nurburgring and hockenheim um that was that was the last time they they hosted and then uh actually germany had a drought of gps and then Hockenheim started hosting again for a while, but without the Nürburgring. Yeah. So uh, the Nürburgring will be making a, a reappearance. But something very interesting to note about that Nürburgring race. And um, usually at that point, it's basically the last weekend of October. Okay. And uh, in the last weekend of October, Formula One has usually left Europe because it's cold. Summer is over, um, and they get out of there when autumn starts. Now, at the end of October, you're, you're into European winter. Okay. Now, if you're in the south of Spain or in the south of Portugal, you'll still get away with it. But yeah. not if you're at the Nürburgring, because as far as I understand it, the Nürburgring is in northern Germany. Apparently, it's very close to Belgium. It's only two hours from Spa. It's a it's a two hour drive from the spa circuit, so um and apparently that part of Europe end of October extremely cold, um they ex they expecting uh conditions like in the in the from from zero to ten, so um how how these cars are going to perform in those sort of conditions how they're going to heat up the tires whatever the case may be, it's also going to be very interesting very strange conditions and no data. One thing we will see is just the cold temps being on those things. And you can get into it, can cool from the air. Not two of us. You're going to get a little bit of cold air. You need a bit. You need a bit. It's going to be interesting. And then obviously the third track added to the calendar, making its first appearance. Um, Portuguese Grand Prix, Portimong. Uh, Renault, and Renault and Ferrari have tested yeah. at Portimong recently, actually, and uh, so have Alpha Tori. Alpha Tori have 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 tested at that circuit recently. So um, those tracks will go into the GP with some sort of track data, and uh, team like Mercedes will go in there with no track data. So it'll be interesting. It's actually a track that was designed way back. Um, I think back in 2005, 2006, the idea, the concept arrived and they started building the circuit very much with the intention of getting F1 to return to the country. And um, yeah, promises were made and promises weren't kept. And uh, the Grand Prix never arrived. So the track never really fulfilled its purpose. It uh, managed to host a few MotoGP Grand Prix. Um, when it was newer, but then MotoGP decided that Spain needed a fourth race. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Portugal lost its only race, which was only like 30 kilometers from the border of Spain. I mean, really, they could have made the drive. But um, uh, yeah, so they're finally getting the race that the, that the track was designed for. It was designed by Herman Teich. And uh, there does have slight differences in, in the layout. Um, there's about four or five slight differences in the layout if you're on a GP bike or, in, or if you're in a Formula 1 car. It's not exactly the same. Um, 
tends to be corners where there's a shorter corner and then a longer looping corner. And the longer looping corner is an F1 corner and the shorter corner is a DP corner. So um, that's obviously for for passing and stuff like that. It's going to be it's going to be a tough one. And uh, something very interesting on that track is that uh, that uh, that downhill into down the straight it's it's something else it's a it's a very very steep incline and it's basically i'd say it's almost as much of an incline you know when you go up to turn one in circuit of the americas it's something like that halfway down the main straight this thing just dips and it's uh yeah it's 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 actually it's something quite different so um looking forward to that the game has come under some criticism for not including the these circuits, but uh, I think we all understand that the game yeah. is uh, in development way before the season begins, and um, you know, patching that sort of thing into a game is just. And plus, I don't think I don't think anyone would 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 people be if they if they came out and said right, this is the official game, so technically, we have to have the official calendar. And then they stripped all the other tracks off our game. Would people like that? No, I no. I don't know. I don't think people would uh, be very happy if it's like, well, you can't play Suzuka anymore because it's not a thing in 2020. But hopefully, just as a code masters, this would be very, very nice of you if you did it. But uh, F1 2020, maybe just uh, throw in the random covid tracks that we got in 2020 just just throw them in there as an optional extra maybe in the f1 mm. leagues we can spice up our calendars a bit or, you know throw in a portimong or a nurburgring or a Mugello. and uh yeah it could be could be quite interesting even even if it's something you pay a reasonable amount for um i, w- I would pay something for that um just to have a different experience um yeah. on 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 a track that I honestly didn't expect to ever drive a modern Formula One car around such as Imola. I'd love to love to get Imola on this game. It would definitely be on the TNB calendar. The thing is that was masters for a lazy scan or are we there exactly versus you know adding tracks in As far as as far as I understand their 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 tracks are not laser scan. Um because if you look at 2020 and if you look at 2019, there's no way these tracks were laser scanned. There are tracks with differences. Um, you can feel it. You can see it on certain tracks. Um, if you go to if you go to Catalonia, that's not a. There's certain there's certain tracks. If you get into a debate about this track has changed, it might turn into a debate, and the one guy might say, "No, this track hasn't changed at all," and the other one's like, "That ah, has definitely changed," but. Catalonia, there's there's no debate that that track has changed. Sector three is not the same. Um, it almost feels like you you know that chicane bit. It feels like you've got a lot more space to break almost. And then when you turn and there was that really aggressive decline and then right, the the, yeah. the decline has completely disappeared. It's flat. You turn left, it's flat, and you turn right. It's flat. There's no there's no off camber thing. There's no incline change. And that actually came from the F1 drivers playing the game. Um, they got to that section of the track and they were like, well, what is this then? Um, this, this is not what it looks like. Yeah, there was a lag, wasn't it, just before... Uh, yeah, to, and uh, that that bump appeared in one of the games. It wasn't there, and uh, I actually think Gavin was one of the guys that said it because Gavin um, Gavin is a he's a he's a Suzuka freak, and we actually got to a specific game, and he was like, "What bump is this?" Like, no, I don't, I don't. This is not this is not supposed to be here. So um. That, that's been rectified. So there have been things that have changed, obviously coming to F1 2020 later on in the week. The uh, updated livery 
for the Mercedes Benz, so things can look a little bit more like 2020. Uh, I'm not a Mercedes fan, but um, I have to say it's a it's a really it's a really good living good looking uh, livery. There's actually something I wish Mercedes would bring back, and I know I've said it already. I'm not a Mercedes fan, but it looked so good. It was that that red halo? I I absolutely loved the red halo on the silver car. I thought it was amazing. It just looked brilliant. It was red. It had the Merc badge in the middle. I absolutely loved it. And it only lasted one race. But um, I think even uh, I think even that red halo um, on the black car, you know, on the airbox here at the back, they've got that yeah. red sponsor. Like throw that color on the halo and uh, it could look really, really nice. So um, that, that will be coming to the game probably with other minor minor changes because uh, if it was anything major they would have announced it um but hopefully the livery doesn't break anything um we've we've seen weirder things uh we've seen patches of 100 megs that have broken several things and you wonder what the heck was in the 100 megs um what can you fit in 100 megs so yeah. enough enough to break a game um yeah. Yeah, we we had a bit of a uh, we had a bit of a scare actually at TNB on Friday night with the game. We uh, what, how many times did we do the lobby? Three times, I think we did it three yeah. times. Yeah. First two times it just didn't get going at all. Um, but not really anything I've seen in the other games. Usually, the guy's names on the side there, and you can see someone is hanging. And this time the screen was blank. Um, just absolutely nothing was happening. On, on my side, I couldn't see anything. Um, so that happened twice. Tried it a third time. Luckily, we got going because uh, I don't know if we would have got a full grid if I did it a fourth time. Guys were getting a bit uh, a bit antsy and starting to call for all sorts of crazy things, like 50%. We we don't do that here. You can do that anywhere else in the in the in the PlayStation world, but TNB we do 100% races. Um, that's it makes it so difficult at the end there. Um, remember when we went back to 50%, Mona? We went back to 50%. The guys started complaining. It became a majority thing. More and more guys complained. And eventually it was like, look, we're racing too late. This thing is too long. You know, I want to finish the race and like still be able to watch some YouTube or conspiracy theories or whatever the case may be. I don't know. And um, it's just taking up too much of my night. So can we change it to Friday? So we change it to 50% with an optional, the keyword being optional. Everyone seems to forget that. When we created it, we made 50% with an optional F2 race. You didn't have to attend the F2 race. So if you wanted your early night, that's that's how you got that. Yet, if you enjoyed the majority of your Friday night being taken up by a hundred percent race, then you could you could jump into that. But how many guys attended the F two compared to the F one? Just about everyone, and uh, they were there throughout the season. And at the end of the season, guys begged for uh, guys begged for a hundred percent to return, and it has. Multiplayer cars may return in round two. Obviously, um, that is something we're we're quite excited about, bringing uh, bringing multiplayer cars back with the uh, and obviously after you've raced for a uh, for a whole season on this game, various of those unlock liveries and stuff like that will have opened themselves up. So uh, you'll be able to be a little bit more creative than we were last time around. Um, I actually noticed that when I logged into this game the first time, and I went and looked on multiplayer car, you know, it gave me the not sober racing livery oh, yeah. yeah exactly the same colors everything it was there it was like the standard model i don't know if it just carried over or Jeez. but when i went into it for the first time i was like hey that that's that's the car i raced with that's pretty much the same thing so um also i don't know what f1 is doing regarding formula 2 um i noticed that the cars are 2019 cars 
So uh, I don't know if they're going to be doing what they did last year and introduce the the 2020 F2 cars later on in the season, if they're going to do that or if they're just going to leave it. Uh, if, not really sure. It's actually something pretty easy to do because the cars haven't changed. Um, you know, your, your, your chassis and your engine is the same. So you're really doing a skin repatch. Um, the, 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 the car and the mechanics of it is, is all exactly the same. So, uh, so, uh, Rob bought us for the win 44 to retire. I don't know if, uh, he's having a good laugh saying nice video, enjoying the footage there of, uh, either not Sebastian or Sebastian, or maybe they're the same guy who knows. It was definitely not the same guy, but when the hair gets all messed up, it really could be. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's it. But uh, there we go. I think uh, come to the end of uh, what is this episode nine? We're not doing too badly, yeah. you know. I thought I thought maybe we'd do three or four of these, and uh, we didn't get the viewership today. That uh, that we've got on on other nights but uh, i'm not not too worried about that i'm grateful for the for the guys that have tuned in obviously this will be uploaded on youtube uh later tonight or tomorrow and um you can uh, if you didn't watch or if you didn't catch the whole thing you can uh, you can go back on what on youtube and watch that we're also looking at uh how to get this on spotify i uh I've actually, I actually think I've figured it out. Um, yeah, we, we basically need something that's going to cost us 99 rand a month and, uh, we can, we can get, we can get this on Spotify. So, uh, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll, 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 who, who else, who, who else is on the, uh, we'll, we'll get Devon. Yeah. We'll get Devon to, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just do a thing. We're like at the beginning of every podcast. We're like, uh, we are sponsored by Devin, who's also in the podcast. So why don't you do your own promotion? And then he'll be too embarrassed to say anything at that stage. And then we'll just carry on. So, um, but, but he'll pay the 99 grand. It's, it's basically like a, we'll build a wall and you'll pay for it sort of situation. Um, yeah. so, uh, let's see how that goes. Uh, podcast got got great viewers over the got great viewership over the last two weeks so thank you to everyone who watched got a few extra follows on the on the twitch feed and we've even got a few extra follows because of the podcast on the tnb channel uh tnb channel has picked up five uh new subscribers since the podcast has been being uploaded there so uh nicely done obviously if uh if you don't race with us if you're interested in what we do and you want to race with us in the future, maybe become a reserve driver. You can contact us on here or join our Discord server. It will be over on our on our Twitter feed. And uh, when I figure out how to bring up all the social media on your screen so that you can click on it, I'll I'll do that. But until then, just it's all on Twitter. <laughs> it's all on Twitter. I'm still new to this. Like I say, nine episodes. Not very good. But uh, yeah, let's see. Maybe we must uh, one day uh, get that. Uh, we we've got like a we've got like a famous South African uh, Twitter bloke around our, our ranks here at TNB, and uh, we should uh, we should wrestle him into one of these podcasts because uh, get uh, get his point of view. He's also a big F one fan. He actually uh, he attended that uh, that Red Bull. Uh, There's a picture of him with uh, meeting David Coulthard. They're in Cape Town, so uh, also an F1 fan, and maybe we must uh, try get him on the podcast one day. Okay, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back next week, obviously, hopefully with Devon and Johan. I can tell you more about the TNB race from their perspective because they're in the comms box. I'm, uh, I'm in the cockpit, hope just trying to keep the wheels in a straight line. So I can't even tell you the podium <laughs> positions because I'm not sure. Johan usually prepares that part of the show, so. Uh, that's going to be that for this week. Guys, thank you very much. We'll be back Thanks. next Thanks week. Where are we going next week? For those of you that, for Rob, who asked earlier, because uh, I know you're watching and you don't know where the calendar button is on the Discord. We are going to Mexico. Yes, we're, go we're going to Mexico. We're going to the home of Sergio Perez. 
So uh, is that a win for Racing Point? Who's in the Racing Points? That's right. We're still waiting for uh, we're still waiting for Gavin to make his first uh, major performance of the season. Maybe this will be it. Racing at the home of Sergio Perez. I hope you've enjoyed the background with uh, with old Sebastian. This is going to be posted on multiple social media formats later on in the week because I think it's awesome and it took me two seconds to make. So I love it. It's the most creative thing I've done in a month. So, um, yeah. So, uh, guys, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. If not, if you race with us, we'll see you on Friday. Daniel, join us. Let us know. We'll love to have you. You've made a few comments about how quick he is in time trial, so I, I want him to come and do this in this crowd. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun because he's uh he's one tenth of a second slower than me in Hungary on twenty nineteen, which was one of my favorite tracks on twenty nineteen. So uh um he is quick, he's on a controller. So uh let's see how that goes. Yeah. Obviously, we were joined by our, our our loyal fans today. The 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 Carter boys they didn't make an appearance. I'm not sure why, but uh, this will be on Twitch. We've got Twitch Prime, so it will be there for the next month. And uh, obviously, a copy of this will be uploaded to YouTube. So, thanks, guys. See you all in Mexico. And we'll see you next week, Tuesday, when we've got something to talk about. About Britain. Hopefully hopefully not forty four. Hopefully hopefully we'll be talking about the Merck collision at turn one and the epic debut win for Lance Stroll. I I, I I think I think I think that would be amazing. A Merck collision into turn one. Uh okay, here's my predict before we go, here's my real quick prediction. Okay. Real quick prediction, qualifying. Bottas takes pole over Hamilton, Stroll in third, Perez in fourth. Again, okay, into turn one. Hamilton tries to take that lead off Bottas. Bottas says not quite, hangs on a lot longer than any of us think, but lands up taking them both out, causing a racing point one two where Stroll runs away from his teammate. I think that could be uh that could be quite a race, and that that'll be an interesting podcast. I think we'll even get Johan back in here for that one because I think he's he's lying about being available. He's probably listening to the podcast. So um, uh, we'll uh, we'll see you guys all next week. Thank you very much, Muna. Thank you very much for joining me. Otherwise, I'd be have to ramble by myself. I'd probably just uh, yeah, I'd probably just. Let, let people talk to each other in the comment section and say nothing oh, while I laugh no, at this right. video. That That's what that podcast would be if I was by myself. I would just put up this video for an hour and say, what do you guys think? And uh, so, yeah. And uh, see everybody next week. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.